So Tecno released four <laughs> phones in the Canon 20 lineup, two 4G phones and two 5G phones. These are the 5G phones. We have the Premier 5G and then the Pro 5G. Yes, I know, they look so similar. Well, as seen in the title of this video, we're looking at the Canon 20 Pro 5G and why I think this is the sweet spot. Put simply, the Pro 5G shares a lot of similarities with the more expensive Premier 5G. And that's why I think the Pro 5G is the one to get in this lineup. One very obvious similarity would be design. If you're handed these two phones and no one tells you they're different, you honestly wouldn't know they are two different phones. And I think that's a good thing for the Pro 5G. But just to be clear, they're not completely identical. They're just kinda identical. Like they both come in the same black and blue colors. They have the same patterned look, the same leather-like finish on the rear, the same Pentagon camera module. And at first glance, you think the camera modules are exactly the same, but they're not. Because on the Premiere 5G, the module is slightly bigger. Also a bit of a different shape. It also has what looks like a black dot. That's the laser autofocus. So yes, they're not identical twins, but it's really hard to tell them apart. You would have to really look. Oh, almost forgot. Another way to tell them apart is to look for the headphone jack. It has been removed on the Premiere, but it's still present on the Pro. The Pro 5G, just like the Premiere 5G, gives you two speakers, one at the top and the other at the bottom. Nice. You also get two mics, the Type-C port, a SIM tray that allows you to have two nano SIMs and an SD card, also nice. But you notice that the power button is now the regular kind, and that's because the fingerprint reader has been moved to under the display. So it now uses an optical fingerprint reader, and it works just fine. But because it's optical, it wouldn't be as fast as a physical side-mounted reader, but it's fast enough. So all of this is just to say that the Pro 5G's design and build isn't far off from his elder brother. The Pro 5G has a 6.67 inch, 120Hz, 1080p AMOLED display. It looks really good and it feels really good too. It's really responsive to touch and the animations are really smooth too. Out of the box, it's set to auto refresh, which is good for battery life, but if you want to experience the speed and responsiveness all the time, you have to switch it to 120Hz. I watched a couple of YouTube videos, played some games, everything looked very vibrant and punchy. The bezels as well looked smaller, especially the chin, and pairing that with the hole punch cutout, there's not really anything to complain about. If I had to complain, I might talk about brightness. Visibility under direct sunlight isn't so great. But really, there's nothing to complain about. And the best part is, this is the exact same display spec on the Canon 20 Premiere 5G. Another reason why this is the sweet spot. This uses the MediaTek Dimensity 8050 processor. This is also the processor and the Premiere 5G. But how well does it perform? Simple answer, really well. Like I mentioned earlier, the phone feels fast. Apparently, one of the perks of the Dimensity 8050 is ultra fast responsive displays. Gamers would benefit from this, but even while scrolling, opening and closing apps, you'll feel that speed. The Pro comes with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. I believe that's the only variant available. 8GB of hardware RAM is more than enough for everyday people, so you would have no issues multitasking, switching between apps and all that. And even when it comes to gaming, this is also very capable. It has the Mali G77 MC9 processor for its GPU. And I'll admit, I probably didn't push it to its limit because I'm not that much of a gamer, but with the little gaming I did with it, I had zero issues. It played it like a champ. And according to MediaTek's websites, the chip offers supreme gaming with reliable, fast FPS in top titles. So I think it's safe to say gaming is solid on here. One other perk of the Dimensity 8050 is 4K video recording. So let's talk about cameras now. Earlier, I mentioned that the camera modules on the Premiere and Pro are different, but I didn't mention that they have different cameras as well. The Pro has a weaker setup though, with a 64 megapixel main sensor and a two megapixel depth and macro sensor. What do I think of the photos? I really like them. Yes, only the main cameras really work, but it works really well. I mean, look at the color, the sky, the detail, 
These are good photos. I mean, you might need to up your resolution to 1080 or 4K to really see the details, but yeah, really impressive main camera on the Canon 20 Pro 5G. I also took shots indoors, you know, with not so great lighting, and the results as well were pretty amazing. On the viewfinder, it didn't look that great, but after processing, I was blown away. I even took some portrait mode shots and I also really liked them. But you tell me, what do you think about these shots? Feel free to drop a comment down in the comment section. I took a few selfies, actually just two, but from these two, the 32 megapixel camera seems to have done a decent job, especially with the sky in the background. After selfies, I took videos. As mentioned earlier, the Pro 5G can shoot up to 4K, but with no stabilization. So if you're shooting in 4K, just make sure you're using like a tripod or something. But for moving shots, you can trickle down to 1080p and use the super steady mode. For the front facing camera, you max out at 2K, but 1080p again is the sweet spot because it comes with better stabilization. Overall, I think it's a decent camera setup. Not the most versatile, but that main camera takes impressive photos. 5,000 milliamp hours and an included 33 watt charging adapter. The Dimensity 8050 is also pretty power efficient and helps extend battery life. With that said, depending on your usage, a full charge can last you a whole day or most of the whole day. I played FIFA Mobile for 30 minutes straight and it took 6% of the battery. So with heavy use, you can expect to get eight hours of screen on time, which is pretty good. But to further extend the battery, you can switch to auto refresh rate or even bring it down to 60 Hertz. But even if it dies, about an hour of charging with the included 33 watt charger would give you enough juice to go through another day. And if you're wondering how this compares to the Premiere, it doesn't quite match up. The Premiere gives you 45 watts of wired charging, so it's faster. Overall, it's a pretty solid phone, and when you compare it with the Canon 19 Pro 5G, it's actually an upgrade. And in the Canon 20 series, I still think it's the sweet spot. So yeah, that's my review of the Canon 20 Pro 5G, the sweet spot. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you when you see me.